the mistletoe margarita, the Scrooge driver, the North Pole punch. The holidays call for cocktails, so get everything you'll need for them delivered with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. So what's it gonna be? Classics like Bullet Bourbon, Don Julio Reposado, or Kettle One, or maybe something new. Find it all on Drizzly where you can get beer, wine, and spirits delivered for any holiday festivity. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Potted Together podcast. My name is Becca, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Adam and Nicole. Hey. Hi. Spoopy. It's spooky vibes, even though the sun is out where I'm at. (laughs) Same. (laughs) It is our first spooky episode of 2023. I love this time of the year. Ugh. Me too. I think I'm actually going to decorate for fall today. Oh, fun. You feeling yeah. the fall vibe? I am. And I feel like if I don't do it now, I'm not going to do it. And like, I was just thinking about how cozy my house feels this time of year. And it's like so much more cozy when there's like pumpkins and like mm-hmm. flameless candles everywhere. I just love decorating for fall more than I love decorating for Christmas. I'm going to be honest. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I feel like I need the link to your favorite flameless candle. I think oh, you've, I got, you've talked mm. about it. Or you guys, I mm-hmm. I want some flameless candles, you know? Okay. I'll send you mine. Becca can send you hers. And we okay. could just yeah. share. We could share all the flameless candle okay. links. We'll share some links. Yeah, I got, I mean, honestly, I got a lot of them just from Michael's and they've been great. But I like the ones that have like an automatic timer mm-hmm. where it's like and a lot of the newer like a lot of them do have it. There may be like a couple dollars more, mm-hmm. but they'll just turn on at the same time every day. Yeah. Oh, which is great. Oh, yeah, that is great. There is yeah. one that I got. It the it's so expensive. It's like lumen luminer lumineer something. And it's beautiful and it like the batteries last a really long time i think they even have mm-hmm. them now where you could charge them for like usb usb c usb probably oh, that's great yes yeah, so you don't have to like keep buying batteries or use your usable batteries yeah. they're expensive i think one candle is anywhere from like 25 to 50 bucks for one candle oh Dang. my god that's crazy but they're really nice though and they last forever but i have a cheaper set that i got that i love i just put out my black ones my black flameless Ooh, candles on my mantle and it's so spooky oh i love sisters. it yes sisters. oh my gosh i watched halloween town the other day and it was oh. the best vibe i didn't finish it because daniel walked in and was like what's this and i was like <gasps> You've never seen Halloween Town. We have to start it over. I don't think I've and seen Halloween Town either. I have, but it was a long time ago. It was when the kids were little. Oh, yeah. That was more like when I was little mm-hmm. type of Halloween movie, but it's so good and like so cheesy, but it's a classic. Like, yeah. The feeling that that movie gives me, I don't think any other Halloween movie gives me that because it's so nostalgic for me. Okay, but, but for a second, I thought you were going to say that you watched Halloween, and I was very proud. Very, very proud. Hell no. Okay. Not. I <laughs> just, I, I told Daniel, because Nicole's coming to see us again, and I was like, Dan, <gasps> right. think about what scary movie you want to watch. He's like, why? Because yes. Nicole's coming back. Oh, my God. See, this is my... This is my gift to him. Like whenever Nicole comes in town yes. or anybody yeah. who likes scary movies, I'm like, this is your chance because you're never watching them if it's just me okay, and Okay, can we like, watch the original Halloween? It's it's not yeah. that bad. Okay, yay. <gasps> we can watch it. I feel so like it's a excited. classic. It's a the classic. Way, too. The way that your face just lit up, Nicole. Like, you don't know. You don't even know. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Nicole is so happy right now. Yeah. <sighs> so happy yeah i'll i'll watch it but like the last movie that we watched together i what was it called hellraiser the new one. Oh, okay yeah i like was just kind of falling asleep while we were watching it It was gory and that was it was even a little was, too much for me dare i say like it was yeah but i liked it <laughs> see i just yeah the like 
the moments when like the thing would like stab through their hands like it just because i knew it was coming mm-hmm. like, i can't yeah I, can't. I was surprised that you watched that actually my eyes were closed most of the time yeah. like so much that i kind of fell asleep like i said yeah but okay so that's kind of what i'm gonna do this weekend and that's fun just decorate for fall daniel goes back to work on monday his paternity leave is over Aww. how we feeling how we feeling are you scared yes yeah yes yeah. very scared very scared and anxious i mean yeah i just have no idea like what work is gonna look like with him not being here mm-hmm. so i need to find someone to watch nora like one day a week like asap because i have to Ugh, i wish i, I, I like to get closer. most of my stuff done mm. i know my god Ugh. it's hard have you thought about not that this is the easiest thing to do but like because he, he pretty much works like a nine to five right yeah so yeah. have you thought about switching your schedule to do like two days a week like you work nights instead of it's a lot but yeah. Well, I was actually thinking last night, like, maybe we can record the podcast in the evening until I find childcare. That's a good idea. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. But that's a behind the scenes logistic that nobody cares about. But yeah. <laughs> but yesterday we tried to record and Nora was just like not having it and making a lot of little noises and it just wasn't working. So I think for this, like, I have to have someone with her. Yeah. I mean, I was I was thinking more so for recording videos for YouTube, but then I think about it and I'm like, we're coming up on winter. That You're going to have yeah. no light after like 4.30. I know. I'm thinking I'll probably just film my videos on the weekends. Oh, okay. And then edit during the day, like when she's napping maybe, because editing is easier to just like get up from. Right. And mm-hmm. filming is not. Right. So I think that's what I'll end up doing. We'll see. Okay. But and that's that's fine. That's kind of what I did before I did this full time. I just worked mostly on the weekends. Mm-hmm. So I kind of am just gonna have to like be flexible and shift my time yeah. around. But it'll be another adventure figuring out everything again. But I'm really glad he was home for so long, but it has it's gonna be like a whole adjustment again. Yeah. So Yeah. But yeah, that's my update. Mm. Oh, and the thrips. I Oh yeah. <laughs> I did my <laughs> like second treatment technically Mm -hmm. but it's actually kind of the first because it's the first time i've used like a chemical i used captain jack's dead bug brew outside Mm -hmm. and i think that it went okay i think that it wasn't as widespread as i thought oh good like it was mostly on like the lower bench and my mic ins but i'm treating everything as if it has it Mm -hmm. because i just can't take any risks yeah but it's definitely in the greenhouse cabinet I didn't wear gloves. Mm, oh shoot. Okay, well wear gloves. I'm gonna get roasted. No, wear gloves. You're not. no one, Wash your no hands. one does. But you know, I've just been really cognizant of like think because skin absorbs so much. Like when I'm doing my skin tear, right. I'm like, oh my gosh, you like it absorbs everything. Yeah, so, it's yeah. scary. You're yeah, so right. Okay, next that, time. We don't want that third nipple popping up again. All right. <laughs> again. Oh my god. <laughs> I ha- again. <laughs> That just registered. I'm like, where? <laughs> oh, it only pops up when so, I'm stressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or when I'm turned on. Oh god, could you imagine? Or when I'm cold. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, gloves next time. Yes. I hope no one roasts me about that in the comments. Ooh, be nice to me. I'm sorry. Mm. I'm doing my best. No one will. Okay, but. Yeah, I feel pretty good about it. I do need to like tackle the cabinet one more time or, you know, I haven't done the cabinet yet this cycle, but mm-hmm. it's its own environment. So I feel less stressed about doing that with all the rest of the plants, you know. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's mine. Are you seeing any adult thrips on your uh, sticky traps? I didn't put out sticky traps yet. OK, I just didn't know if that's, I need if to, that's a thing. I've heard blue sticky traps. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I think I don't know why exactly they're attracted to blue, but then I read somewhere that like blue sticky traps are better because then if you have beneficials they're not going to be attracted to the blue mm. i don't know but i do you bugs see are weird bugs are weird it's something that i would have to order online and like i just feel yeah bad about ordering stuff online so much like it just makes me <sighs> anxious mm-hmm. i don't know why i feel bad for the delivery drivers who have to drive down my driveway you know i don't know that's yeah. really silly but <laughs> yeah 
it's that's their silly. job. Yeah. It is. <laughs> but I feel bad every time they come. I'm like, so sorry. <laughs> Leave them a little Christmas gift. Yeah, I need to put out some stuff this year. I'm going to put like a basket out there. Yeah. I meant to do that when Nora was first born because I swear they were at our house like every day for like two weeks. Yeah. With and all the gifts. They, yeah, they had to have gotten the memo because like they saw me pregnant and then all of a sudden there's a crib and a car seat and <laughs> yeah. like all this shit showing up. Yeah, yeah. It's, kind it's kind of fun. Of, it's kind of it's fun kind to of think sweet. about because they're, they're, they're like going through your stages of life with you. They're like, oh, she's having yeah. a baby. Yeah. I feel like that would be such a cute commercial for like USPS or yes. something. Yes. Yes, it would. Oh, that would. <sighs> would. And it would be good around the holidays too. I know. That's cute. USPS, hire me. I'll be your creative director. There you yeah. go. Boom, done. Okay, well. With the government shut down, I bet they, you know, can barely pay their workers. So I don't think they're going to be hiring. Oh, uh, yeah. Them. That's right. <laughs> Budget cuts. <laughs> anyway. I did some VR last night. Very out of my comfort zone. VR? Well, really? okay. With so the it was mom group? With the mom group. I went out with a oh few of the moms God. from my wow. daughter's high school. Did you do and VR Chippendales, Nicole? I did not. <gasps> but how crazy would that be? <laughs> no. I would love that. <laughs> what if they actually substitute a person so it could feel 4D and then you took the thing off and it's just some like really big oh. sweaty man that's just like, hey, baby. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> uh. That is terrifying. No, I went to this place called the Unreal Garden. Okay. <laughs> and it's augmented reality. So it's not virtual completely. Like you could still see the people in front of you. And it was so cool. At first, my headset wasn't working. I was a little frustrated. I felt like a boomer. I was like, what's happening? But then they fixed it. And I was like, whoa, this is cool. It was like three different stages. So you went through a garden and you can like feed wildlife. And then you went in the sea and you could see like the fish and the coral reefs and everything. And then you went in the galaxy. And that was my favorite because like it was like stars everywhere. It was so cool. That's cool. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. And then we went out to dinner, but I I was excited about it because I didn't know what to expect because I've never even put on a pair of virtual reality glasses but i really want to like get some like maybe maybe like over this winter break like that could be our new fun thing remember when animal crossing came out do we all remember Mm -hmm. animal crossing days becca you were kind of late to that game i feel like i was late to the game but you were really late to the game yeah, I was. And I feel like I'm late to like the VR two years game, late. too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I kind of want to do it. Have you guys ever done, like, actual virtual reality, or do you have headsets? No. I honestly think it would make me sick. Like, just thinking so about it, I, I feel like it would, it would make, make me, me nauseous. Too. So that's what I thought, too. But NASA wears these glasses for training, and they specifically said on the website that it doesn't cause any nausea. So I'm hmm. wondering, like if that's also implemented in most virtual reality glasses, yeah. I would think it'd have to be. Speaking of nausea, though, really quickly, oh, my God. So I'm supposed to, what well, we are, we're going to a Colts football game. I'm just a natural football mom now, okay? And I don't even, yeah. ha- I don't even have any kids in, that play football. But yeah, Mia's boyfriend is turning 16 next week, and one of his requests was that we go with them to a Colts game. So we're driving to Indianapolis on Sunday, And his mom offered for us to drive with them. And, you know, I I always drive. So I vaguely, (laughs) I vaguely uh, remember. I know that's going to be the issue with this. (laughs) I vaguely remember me having. Is it going to be dark out? Are we going to drive during dark? Listen, it's a whole thing. I went through the whole list in my head. But one of the things that I remember was I get car sick in the backseat of a car. Like, Mm -hmm. pretty badly and I haven't been in the backseat of a car in a very long time because I always drive because I'm you know control freak but I went with these moms yesterday and they picked me up last and I got in the backseat and didn't even think about it and 20 minutes into this ride I got very car sick I thought I was gonna hurl all over the place and it was like (laughs) it was like a the cherry on the cake (laughs) Next time you're offering to drive. Oh, yeah. I was like, sorry, ladies, I got to roll this window down on the highway. I apologize. They all had their hair cute. I was like, it's not happening today. I'm I'm going to be violently ill and it's not going to be good. So 
needless to say, I'm driving on Sunday because (laughs) I cannot be in the backseat of a car for four hours. I will literally die. But then I vaguely remember taking an Uber not that long ago and I got car sick too. And it was only like a 15 minute ride. I wonder if this is something that's happening with age. I don't know. I think it is. My boss, she can't even, if you're in a parking lot, even if she's driving, if she circles a lot once to find a, find a a parking spot or like up, up one row down another and then back up, she'll throw up. Oh my God. Really? Yeah. Very strange. Well, What made it worse was we were stuck in traffic and it was like, stop and go, stop and go. And then we got to the nightmare. (laughs) We got to the parking garage and it was one of those that just like, you Mm. just circle all the way up. And I was like, I, the, one of the mom, Tara, she was like, are you okay? And I was like, I just need to get the fuck out of this car. <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> okay, but back to the augmented reality thing. So, like, you held out your hand and, like, a deer ate things from your hand? Yeah. And there was but, stuff you could visually see in your hand as you're holding it out? Yeah. Like, you could pick up food and give it to the... It was a so rabbit. you could see, like, an apple or a carrot and you could pick it up and you, you could pinch hand it. it? You pinch okay. it. You drag it and you drop it. Oh. So like you can't like and your hand was like gridded. Like it was like avatar, like it looked like a grid. You know, it didn't look like a human hand. But it was my hand. Okay. Like I stuck up the middle finger at one point and I was like, Yeah, this is my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Proof. <laughs> Proof. <laughs> Classic me. Oh, <laughs> Fucking gosh. vibes. That's fun. It was fun. It was different. So like that's just augmented reality so virtual reality has got to be way more realistic and i just want to like explore the rainforest i think i've talked about this before like how cool would that be Mm -hmm. to go on vacation in your living room you know like literally that would be really cool that Mm -hmm. would be cool black mirror shit (laughs) yeah yeah that's a black mirror episode you know here's what i picture though have you ever like seen somebody do virtual reality wearing the, they look, the glasses they look like real doing things. dumb real dumb mm. it's <laughs> it's giving that sound on on tiktok you look so dumb right now <laughs> yeah. uh, is that the x or is the that people who like Rihanna? run into a wall or like smash the tv yes yeah yeah yep 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 i can't tell you how many times in a week i just go to that sound on tiktok and watch those videos because it's just a bunch of funny funny women just like pointing out their husband's icks or their boyfriend's icks. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I saw That's a good song it, too. I see a couple of them really funny. Like there was one where this girl must have been recording underwater and her boyfriend was sitting there like kicking his yes. feet and she was like, yes. this just gave me a new ick. And I was like, oh my God, it is little twinkle toes. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many little Ooh. things like that. Like there was one this woman was her husband was holding the baby and his ankles were apart and his knees were together. Like can you picture that? Yeah. And Daniel does that all the time and I looked at it and I was like, "Oh, oh. that's so funny. I just <laughs> that's, envisioned that's it." I was like, "Wait, that is an knees ick. together, ankles apart." Uh, <laughs> Sitting that's down. Really funny. <laughs> that's uh. definitely an ick. Uh. Okay, so Nicole has a mom friend crew. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing a lot. Colts? They're sweet. Indianapolis Colts. Indianapolis Colts. Now, too bad it wasn't a Chiefs game, um, if I'm being honest, because (sighs) there's talk that Taylor Swift is going to be at the Chiefs game. And Becca wanted to discuss this topic. (laughs) Becca (laughs) wanted to discuss this topic. So (laughs) I think we should (laughs) think we should just talk about it for a second. You went down the rabbit hole that is Taylor and Travis. Yeah. See, I... Okay, I want to make it clear. I like Taylor Swift. I am not a Swifty, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I am fascinated by her influence. I think that's really what it is. Yeah. Because yeah. I, there was a bunch of stats that I was seeing, and I do not remember them, but like one of them I remember was like the NFL like search or something, or Travis Kelsey's search or something went up like 400%. And like, yeah. jersey sales. Sold yes, out. his jersey sales. Sold out. Like, that is just insane. They're not even together, but they she she just There's, like I know. They, they could just, just like be have friends. run out a few times. They could just yeah. be friends. Although she was okay. caught sitting in his lap at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Quite friendly. Yeah. No, I quite friendly. Somebody that I this podcast I I'd listened to said lap. that they think they're endgame. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You think he, anybody would. You think they're what? That mustache. This needs podcast a ride. I listened to 
Oh my god. Those eyebrows need a ride. Hold on to the eyebrows. <laughs> you know, this podcast I was listening to said they think that they're end game. And I don't know. Oh. I mean, I can see it. Well, I don't know. I hope so. Okay, so I listened to his podcast because he was going to talk about Taylor Swift. And I knew, look, I knew it was going to be clickbaity. I knew that it was going to be like, ah, it was nice, but I don't want to say anything else. I still yeah. listened to it. And then I was like, is he a douchebang? He seems like a douchebang. See, but oh, I don't know. I don't think but he then is she a douchebag. Looked, she looked so happy. So I'm like, I don't care. You know what? Just live your life, girl. Like, I don't yeah. think okay. he is a douche. He doesn't uh, have he any football though oh, so i mean I there's a level of, there's a level of possible douchiness yeah. but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that he is a douche yeah. it's just Expected. he's a professional athlete yeah okay okay i'll give him that yeah there's um, like a level of like ugh. the tiktoks but though then, that i'm particular they're both narcissists they have to oh, be yeah. for that oh level yeah of fame, so you know what it's fine narcissists <laughs> find narcissists true okay and the NFL just released that they hired Usher for the halftime show. And in my mind, they should have shelled out the money to get Taylor Swift. Like they should have. Epic fail on their part. But also, oh would she do it? I don't think she has time. I think she's in Brazil in February. So, yeah. sorry. I mean, she has more important things to do. She's already Can you selling imagine out how many people stadiums. would watch, though? Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I would go. I would watch the Super Bowl, and I never watch the Super Bowl. But the I don't Super care, Bowl is like its own it. beast as far as the performance goes because they have to haul in and haul out in like less than five minutes. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. like you have to be a certain kind of person to Corey. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Like Beyonce. No, I mean, whoa. Yeah. She mm -hmm. was like practicing for a year for the the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's true. But also, true. like, the Chiefs won the Super Bowl last year, right? So the chance that mm -hmm. they're going to be back in the Super Bowl this year is high. How cool would that be? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, the, the TikToks that I'm particularly enjoying at the moment are the ones of women recording their sports fanatic husbands secretly and being like so babe um did you see how travis did you see how taylor swift put travis kelsey on the map <laughs> and they're just like what are you talking about there was this one that was he was like if i hear about this one more fucking time about taylor swift too and i was like oh my god definitely not husband material i think i sent that to you adam did you okay sometimes yeah, i save up my, my tiktoks to view like when yeah. I'm in a mood, you know? Yeah, yeah. It is funny. Oh, that's kind of cute. Yeah. Yeah. That is cute. Or when I'm taking a shit, you know, either or. Well, <laughs> rightfully so. Either way. Her influence, insane. Heinz just came out with a condiment based on her being viewed at this game. So basically, there was oh, reports that. that she was seen eating her chicken strips with ketchup and seemingly ranch is what they oh, all said. I and did now see this. Heinz created a sauce that was a mixture of ketchup and ranch and it's called ketchup and seemingly ranch. Oh my god. And I'm sure it's going to sell out cuz you know what? I want to get my ass to the store and try that. If it goes in if it goes in mother's mouth, it goes in it's my mouth. It's going in mine. You yeah. know cuz they already so, have a Kelsey, cranch. What are you doing? <laughs> so <laughs> no? I'll take one for the team. <laughs> Touchdowns. <laughs> like it's it's like kind of campy. Like all this Taylor Swift uh, stuff, it's getting campy, isn't yeah, it? Is that it is. the definition of camp? Well, I don't know if that's the definition of camp. Maybe. What, what I don't really understand camp. I've never heard this term. Isn't camp like it's it's like so niche inside joke? I thought camp was like over the top extravagant, that kind of thing. But anyway, there have been reports, though, that Taylor is kind of taking one for the team. And what I mean by that is her good friend, Sophie Turner, is going through some stuff. And she I've is. been seeing things that people are like, they had dinner and then all of a sudden Taylor's like, I'm going to publicly be at this game. And literally that's all anyone's talking about. Because yeah. Usher was announced as a Super Bowl halftime show and the announcement was done by none other than Kim Kardashian who mm. very public feud with Taylor Swift. And mm -hmm. if you look at the NFL, everything is Taylor. Like she literally just like no one cared about the whole, which Usher, weird choice, by the way. Oh, super weird choice. I don't under, I don't get it. I don't get it. But yeah, so I don't know. But that woman, she has power. And I think that's why I've been so intrigued by her this past year. Because like going to her concert was like, 
I, I, I mean, I would, I think I was honest about that. I didn't even know half of the songs. Like I had not listened to folklore evermore. Me neither. I listened to midnights and then that was that. But like, even at the concert, I was like, I don't know these songs, but I'm still standing up. But it was like, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it other than it was just powerful to just see like this one person have such a grip on Mm -hmm. like this many people super impressed by it. Like, whoa, okay. She can control a crowd. It's very sexy. I saw some photos from the reputation part of her concert and I was like, oh, I can see why this confused Adam. No, but have you seen have you seen Vigilante Shant? Yeah, you need to watch oh, that performance that's what I was specifically. Of. She was yeah. in a dark blue beaded suit. With a chair. Oh, with her legs open, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A couple times. yeah, I think that's I think that's what I, I was actually referring to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was hot. Yeah, I saw somebody was like sharing photos that they took from the concert and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get it. When I saw her though with Sophie, Turner. I don't follow Turner. Turner. Yep, I got really excited because yes, I was just like, can we just be done with men, please? Uh, not saying that. Oh, she's- you thought? I thought. you thought they were scissor sisters. That's what I thought. That's what I was. That's what I was happy for. I was oh. very excited about it. Oh, because I was like Taylor. We've been burned by some dudes. Can we switch sides? But. No, <laughs> she switching sides, switching sides. Yeah, no, she's she's very much a women empower, but she's never came out as bi. I don't think there's mm. been speculation, but we shouldn't do that. But like, no, we they shouldn't. just look so cute together. You yeah, know, like, one can hope. Same height. Sophie Turner you know? is bi, and I think she <laughs> yeah she is. Sophie Turner like bi. She, she is, said that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like ooh. Uh, did we did we talk about Sophie Turner and Joe? I think we did. We, we did, did. Yeah, we did. It's man, he is just the worst. <laughs> I'm so glad that they're, you know. But now if she got with more, Taylor Swift, how fun would that be as a payback? <laughs> oh my god, because ultimate Mr. payback. Perfectly fine. How's your yeah. heart after breaking my mind? My mind. Oh wow. I didn't really get to talk about a catch up, but do you guys care if I just oh. say one thing? Please, I'm sorry. No, not much has happened this week, but I was on the hunt and I was successful on finding the Oogie Boogie candy dish, which, you know, if you're not like a Disney adult I love it. or a Target slut like I am, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But there was an Oogie Boogie candy dish that was only available at certain Targets that had like the Disney shop inside of them. Because, you know, yep. uh-huh. I don't know if you guys have Targets like that now, but my Target has mm-hmm. like this whole middle section that's like Disney for kids and stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this thing was very difficult to find, but finally it came back in stock in Queen Creek and I snagged it. Oh, you were in Queen Creek. Nice. Again, Tear. yeah, I've been there like a couple times. But yeah, that's also where I got my Animal Crossing when the pandemic first started and like everyone was oh, buying yeah. switches yeah, yeah. and they yeah. you couldn't find them. And I was like, I got to order it online. So Queen Creek yeah. always comes through, man. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Queen Creek. Love Queen Creek. But then I got this Queen candy Creek dish Target. that I worked so hard for. And then I was like, wait a minute, I can't put anything in this because so my cats. cats will eat everything I put in there. So now the I just have like bastards. An, an empty candy dish. I think I might try to put like a trailing plant in his mouth. I was going to say, because it's such a cool dish. I saw you post it and I've seen yeah. it on TikTok. And we're a very big Nightmare Before Christmas household. Like Jack and Sally all day over here. Okay. All day or a day. But we also love a good Oogie Boogie and a mayor. We love them. Yeah. So I was thinking about going to look for that dish, too, because we don't have a can. Well, we do. We have like a bowl that has like one of those hands that like will be like, getcha, you know, like that'll automatically go down (laughs) and scare the shit out of Mm. kids. You know, I had to do that. That's funny. Nicole was taking her wrist and bending it. So I thought it was going to (laughs) be a gay candy dish. Like, you know. (laughs) It's rainbow. <laughs> what would it say if it if it said something while it's flicked its wrist? What would it say, Adam? Oh, as our resident <laughs> gay. Yeah, what would it gay. say? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, stereotypical. My yeah. goodness. I just looked up this candy dish because I haven't seen it before. Somebody is selling it on Poshmark for eighty dollars. That Come is more on. than a fifty. That's like that's, 
a 50% upcharge because it's $34.99, $35. Yeah, that is, that's that insane. Is double. That's that crazy. Yeah. Double. Would that be 200% or 50%? What would the, or 100%? 100%. What would the percentage, 100% price increase? Yeah. Because it's okay. literally double the price. I don't know why I'm thinking 200%. I don't know. Oh, it's textured. Oh, I didn't notice the texture on it. Yeah, that's fun. That's yeah, it's so super fun. cute. Anywho, th- that's my Oogie Boogie candy story. I love that story. Did you have anything else happen? Because we could go over a little. Oh, I didn't really know. I, I got a little bit of a scratchy throat, and I know that they're offering free COVID tests again, so I think I might order those, but I don't think I have COVID. Mm, it's something's going something else is going around because me i just got over a cold struggling like i've been struggling mentally with like brain fog and all of this stuff that i'm just like i don't know what's going on but yeah Mm. don't drink the water don't drink the water something's in it something's in it (laughs) don't drink the water yeah dan was a little sick the other week he had like a fever for like a day really and yeah it was really quick and we have covid tests but I i don't know if he took one I guess I would have known if he had COVID if he took it. I don't know if he did. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, Jay had COVID and he got a fever with it. But like, there's also something else going around that is with your throat. It's like scratchy throat that turns into like a sore throat. I don't know. You know, I'm a mom. So I hear these things. Well, that's why my throat is currently scratchy. You know, I don't scratchy. like a scratchy throat. No. Yeah. No, not at all. That's not fun. Yeah, but they are offering free COVID tests, four per household. So just get them yeah. because it's free shit from the government, and I'm all about that. I'll yeah. take whatever they yeah. give me. Do they ever expire? Because I still have some from last year. I still they have some extended. too. They show that they do, but I. They extended I the expiration date. Yeah. Look it. Look it up on like something.gov. I don't know what it is. Maybe your state. Yeah. I know they extended the expiration date, which how does that work? I don't know. I'm not going to question it. You know, on our Patreon, though. OK, so like moving away from COVID because we don't like Ew. her. No, you know, on our Patreon here. episode, we were talking about Daniel throwing his back out. I don't know if that made it into the edit, but is there such thing as like throwing your chest out? Because I did something to a muscle in the front of my body. That is causing really? so much pain. Like when uh, I sir, breathe. That's, that's you know your when heart th- you're touching? No, the- my heart's isn't it over here? Oh, yes. Okay. It's on sorry. the left side. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So you guys are backwards. It's definitely like a muscle thing, but you know, like when you throw your back out and you breathe in deeply, you can like it like causes you to spasm. Well, that's happening with the front of my chest now. And I'm like, okay, well, now I move from throwing my back out to throwing my sternum out. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Uh. that's so weird maybe you just pu- literally pulled like a muscle a pectoral after i muscle. just got done saying like oh i need to start stretching and then i'm like mm. i just pulled a freaking yeah. muscle that i i don't even th- i don't even have pecs it's just fat there <laughs> well you guys still a muscle I though. Still a muscle. <laughs> <laughs> i pulled it's my just, man it's tip. all just fat uh, oh anyway. that's so that's weird because mia no. literally just texted me two minutes ago and said that she pulled something in her neck and she can't move. And I was like, cool. Yeah. Wow. We have plans this, this like, weekend. <laughs> you guys <laughs> gotta stretch. Everybody needs to stretch more. We do. Seriously. Stretch. I guess like, okay. See, I grew up dancing and then I went into cheer. So I am pretty flexible even still. So do you I have still not stretch? Dealt- Sometimes, but not regularly. I'm still pretty, f- I can do the splits like still. So it's just kind of. Your body remembers. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if I can do the splits anymore after having a baby. Oh, gosh. I was going to say, you just like walk into Becca's house. And she's like. <laughs> full she just, full like, split. <laughs> she's like, hey. And then just holding my leg. Goes hey. into like a weird full Barbie. Split. <laughs> <laughs> I open the door like weird Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> hey, oh, gosh. welcome to my weird house. What oh, she my say? gosh. I think that's what she says. Anyway. My goal is within three months to be able to touch my toes because I can't even get close. Oh, I could touch my toe. I could touch the floor flat handed. Oh, okay. Well, that's you really got, good. You have tiny little legs. All right. I got very I long do. legs. I do. I have little baby T-Rex <laughs> legs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. See, that's the thing. Like with proportions, like some people's legs are just much longer than the top of their body. So it is further to stretch. Yeah. Adam, so I actually never sure. thought about that. 
Daniel can touch his toes and he's always thought that was so cool. And I'm like, it's really not that hard. But my <laughs> legs are shorter than my torso. So yeah. well, sorry, that doesn't make sense. You know, I have short legs and a long torso. So it's like, right. I've got more to anyway. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that. Okay. <laughs> well, Food for thought. <laughs> everybody out there measuring their legs. Yeah. yeah. It's our leg to to torso ratio. <laughs> All right. The mistletoe margarita, the Scrooge driver, the North Pole punch. The holidays call for cocktails, so get everything you'll need for them delivered with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. So what's it gonna be? Classics like Bullet Bourbon, Don Julio Reposado, or Kettle One, or maybe something new. Find it all on Drizzly where you can get beer, wine, and spirits delivered for any holiday festivity. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. Nice buns, soft, fluffy, and ultra low net carbs. Discover Hero Bread, the delicious ultra low net carb bread with incredible taste and texture. Hero Bread has zero grams of sugar and is under 100 calories per serving, plus high in fiber with 5 to 10 grams of protein per serving. Available on Amazon.com, Walmart.com, and at Hero.co. That's H E R O.co. Delicious ultra low net carb Hero Bread buns and tortillas. Soft and fluffy, high in fiber, and with zero grams of sugar, up to 10 grams of protein, coming in at under 100 calories. Order today at Hero.co and use the code AH10 to get 10% off your first purchase. That's AH10 at Hero.co, H-E-R-O dot C-O. Order from Hero.co now and get 10% off your first purchase with promo code AH10. That's 10% off with code AH10, H-E-R-O dot C-O. Let's stop the chit chat. Let's get into the topic. So as we discussed in the beginning of this episode, we are going to be doing deadly plants for our Halloween special. Now, dun, if you dun, enjoy dun. Ooh, if you enjoy stuff like this, we did a series last October where we went over deaths that plants helped solve. solve. Yeah. 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 That was so fun. So it was basically yeah, so we went over like different murder cases where a plant like solved the case or like helped solve the case. So this year we're doing deadly plants. Whose idea was this? I think it was Adam's. Maybe. Adam, I was just thinking off. about last year when Nicole's <laughs> when Nicole's crime was like, well, we actually don't know who killed her, but they found out where she was found. <laughs> and so I'm like, I, I oh, well, that, <laughs> that was anticlimactic. <laughs> it's the cliffhanger. And then I left you out there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. That's funny. Yeah. So this year we each picked a deadly plant and I'm so excited. The plant that I have chosen is the giant hogweed, also known as the Herlasium mantigazinaeum. Oh. Okay. See, I told myself that I would figure out how to pronounce this before I did the episode, but then that obviously didn't happen. Okay. That's a mouthful. So, <laughs> I wouldn't be it able is, to do it, it either. It is a mouthful. <laughs> we all know that. It's a mouthful, and you you would not want a mouthful of this. Oh. Hey. Hey. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, tis, that's bad. Okay. So it's in the carrot family, and basically, if you're looking at it, it looks like a... It's been described as a Queen Anne's lace on steroids. So it's very, very tall. They can get up to 18 feet tall. Wow. But average is around six feet. So they are a perennial. So they'll they'll come back year after year mm. and they spread via seeds. So let me get back on my notes here. Some more like intricate description of it is it has large jagged leaves and an umbrella shaped white flower, like kind of like a Hoya flower. I think it's called a compound umble. Mm -hmm. Is that how you pronounce that word? Umble? Yes. Hmm. Okay. So a little bit of, you know, terminology for the plant nerds. Love that. And <laughs> it, this one is distinguished basically by the purple splotches along the stem because there's a few plants that do look like that. You'll notice like with 
probably with all of our plants, there's going to be another plant that looks really similar, but it's not poisonous. Mm -hmm. So, or like, yeah, it'll, there'll be like a lookalike that is really poisonous, basically. Oh, so it's you like just have to be very careful. The stem is spotted almost like those uh, corpse flower plants where it's like got it's got like burgundy within. Yep. Yep. Like purple splotchy oh, stuff. Okay. And what's actually toxic on the plant is the sap. So the sap of the hogweed is of the giant hogweed is phototonic and causes phytophotodermatitis in humans, resulting in blisters and scars. Oh, so. Basically, what phototonic means is like the, the chemicals in the sap needs to be exposed to light for it to have an effect. So basically, the chemicals need to be photoactive. Wow. And it will absorb the energy and produce molecular changes, that, and that causes the toxicity. Hmm. Ooh. So if that went above your head, yeah. think vampires you know how vampires when they get touched by the sun they their skin starts to boil yep or like that's me. what this does pretty much me <laughs> yeah okay wait a minute but edward just sparkles <laughs> oh. oh yeah no, I'm just kidding. See, that's an interesting plot hole <laughs> <laughs> um okay so contact with the sap prevents the skin from being able to protect itself from sunlight basically so it causes blisters, skin discoloration, and the reaction can begin as soon as 15 minutes after the contact with the sap. Mm. And it peaks, the reaction peaks between 30 minutes and two hours after contact and can last up to several days. So Yikes. basically, if you ever if you ever do come into contact with it, because this is a widely spread plant, I'm going to talk about like how it spread in a second, but I first wanted to just like share the severity of this plant and like mm -hmm. how intense it is other uh, it's obviously banned and like there are programs specifically for removing it oh so if you do come in contact with the sap you should immediately wash with soap and cold water and avoid contact with the sun for at least 48 hours so you're a vampire for 48 hours after you touch this thing very cool see this is why i don't go hiking just one of the <laughs> One of the reasons. <laughs> throw it out I there. mean, this is one of those things. Okay, I feel like it's like similar to poison oak or yeah, those those types of things. It's mm -hmm. like the not. The, I guess in those situations, it's like the oil. This one's like the sap. Mm -hmm. I feel like since it's the sap, though, it would you would only experience these things if you're like removing it, don't you think? Or, or like you, you fall on it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you fall on it. Wait, yeah. Did you already say where is it located? Like, is it is this in the U.S. all over the world? Yeah, it's in a lot of places. Uh -huh. So I'm actually going to get into that in oh, like sorry. a few minutes. Oh, no, that's fine. We're just excited. We have questions. This is like way more interesting than I thought it was going to be. But like deep diving on stuff like this, like I was like, should we do this every week? It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, calm down. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a bit too focused for our, you know, not plant podcast. Okay, so the USDA Forest Service says that pigs and cattle can actually eat this without harm, which I think is very interesting. That was going to be my next question. Wildlife and how they avoid it. Yeah. I mean, because like, I don't know, some wildlife, you just feel like it's innate and that like they're not going to do it because they sense it. But like doggies running mm -hmm. through the forest. What about them? Yeah. I, f I don't know. I feel like since pigs and cattle can eat it, probably dogs. I mean, I'm not going to give it to my dogs. Yeah. But yeah. Interesting. I don't know how different. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, pigs and cattle are not the same species and they can both eat it. And so what about canines? I don't know. Mm hmm. But I do feel like, I don't know, I always worry about, I always heard that dogs specifically won't eat things that are toxic to them because mm -hmm. they can sense it, like out in nature. Yeah. But Cooper is always eating acorns, so he has no freaking idea. <laughs> oh, those are toxic. I don't even think we can say that. They're so crunchy. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Apparently they're toxic, but not like in a huge way. He just throws up. Mm -hmm. He just has like a gastro reaction. But like he also loves to eat the black sunflower seeds from the bird feed and that caused a huge gastro reaction oh that was bad yeah yeah he's just 
Koopy did a He's just silly. He's one of those dogs that will He's eat cute, anything. Okay. But not all not the sharpest knife in the drawer. <laughs> not no. all there. Not a lot going on up there. Which is funny because <laughs> he will like learn tricks so fast, but I don't know. Survival? <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. He's not what is it like book smart, street smart? Yeah. yeah. Cooper is not street smart. Right. Neither is Prime. Leo is street smart. So is Jazzy. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think my tie is, Adam? Is he book smart or street smart? Can you tell yet? I don't know if I can tell you, but he learns things very quickly. Like, obviously, the bell yeah. to go outside, which, That's fun. Yeah. sidebar, I realized we kind of just destroyed every time we hear jingle bells or anything, you know, in 20 years when Mai Tai's not around. Mm. Literally. Oh, shit. You gotta remember I him. I know. I, so I was like, don't teach your dog to use bells because now, like, I just know in Christmas in like 2050, oh. I'm gonna be crying every time I hear the mm. freaking song. Oh. Yeah. Dang. Dang it. Dang. Didn't think of that. <laughs> no. Okay. Sorry. Anyway, I think, but. Um, okay. Yeah. I think maybe book smart. I don't know if he's going to be street smart. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm going to yeah. guess. Got to get him on the streets. Okay. <laughs> so as far as how the giant hog league reproduces, so it takes several years to actually flower. And when it, so it takes three to five years to flower, typically on average. And when it flowers, it dies afterwards that's like a certain type of perennial i don't remember what kind that is but when it does flower it produces an average of twenty thousand seeds oh so damn you can imagine this this plant is endemic to like eurasia like to a mountain range the caucasus mountain range Mm. i don't i don't even know how to say that word anyway it's in eurasia they're from eurasia okay but they do thrive in other environments. So that's why they are here. And so they end up like choking out the native mm. flora. It's invasive. Essentially. I mean, with, yeah, with 20,000 seeds. That's a per lot. plant. Yeah, that's a lot. She'd be reproducing. Um, yeah. She's putting in the work. She's doing the work. So, <laughs> doing the Lord's work. <laughs> she's doing someone's work. Okay. So the devil's how did work. It- Sorry. Yeah. How did it get over here? That's the main question because every invasive species just makes somebody its way. brought it over. Yep. Yeah. You would think that they would know it was invasive before they brought it over. But I feel like a lot of plants that do get brought over are invasive and they like that because they grow really fast and really well. Because I'm thinking about like morning glories. Yeah. I'm thinking certain wisteria. Those are both really pretty, but they are so invasive. It's like impossible to get rid of them. Yeah. A bunch of plants like that. So, of course, it was the Brits, uh, you know. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry. I <laughs> the, <laughs> the introduction of the giant hogweed was first recorded in Great Britain in 1817, and it was put on the seed list at the Kew Botanical Gardens mm. in London. Blaming it on the Brits. It, yep, yep. And it was brought over as an ornamental garden plant which is shocking to me because how did they even transport i don't know wardian that's just cases. so crazy to me with wardian cases that are like six feet tall mm. well either they found like a baby one or they got the seeds off of it and we're like oh well let's just plant these in this case and take them seeds probably that's, that's true. my guess i don't know because they yeah. are huge i did see a photo yeah they're very, very big. And then 10 years later, in 1828, about 10 years later, they were recorded growing wild in Cambridgeshire, England. So oh. between 1817 and 1828, they were then wild. And now it's an invasive weed that you could definitely just see off the side of the road in several countries, countries and regions, including Western Europe, Eastern Europe, the UK and North America. So as I said, they came from like a mountain range in Eurasia, like kind of like close to Russia Mm. And now they are in a bunch of places. So the U.S. states that they're in, that it's been documented to be in, is Maine, Maryland, Michigan, New Hampshire, Ohio, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Vermont, and Washington. Safe. <laughs> yeah. Same. I was like, woo. It's in good. Wisconsin, though, Nicole. You're very I know. close. I'll be there for it a wedding in a couple close. weeks. Oh, shit. Let's see how far those seeds can fly. <laughs> oh, man. So now we're going to talk about like getting rid of it. How did they 
what is the process of getting rid of this plant and what has what measures have been put in place? Mm-hmm. So it was finally delisted by the Royal Horticultural Society of Great Britain in 2002. Oh, it took that wow. long. So that's, that's a century. <laughs> yeah. So like it's 100 years of just like letting this thing. Wait, 200 years. 200 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Almost 200 years of just letting this thing run wild around the world raw dog in the landscape yep I'm just exactly. gonna let it be let it be i think that it was brought into the u.s in like i didn't write this down but i think i remember it was brought to the u.s in like 1917 i think oh, okay. something like that and then 2008 the u.s did something Another so 100 years <laughs> yeah typical you know it's not it's not a great reaction time here so The European Union funded the giant alien project to combat this plant and other invasive plants, which I feel like a deep dive on the giant alien project would be also very fun. Yeah. Yeah. Weird name. Yeah. It is interesting. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be a really fun topic, too. Because what other plants are they going after? What's the procedure? Like, are are these people trained? Are they wearing special outfits? Like... Yeah, I don't know. that'd be kind of cool. It needs a movie. I can see a movie coming out of this. Mm-hmm. Very fun. Okay, so the giant alien project added the giant hogweed on August 2nd, 2017 to its list of invasive alien species of union concern. Sorry, that's a mouthful. <laughs> which restricted keeping, importing, selling, and breeding and growing this plant that was just six years ago i know wow did i write that down wrong because that was that sentence did not make much sense but i think that's right and basically the government in the eu like governments in the eu are now required to like detect and get rid of the giant hogweed so people like can report it I assume they're out looking for it. I don't know. See, this is interesting. This like, is how I this yeah. is how I picture it. I picture like a bunch of gardeners in hazmat suits. <laughs> and yeah. like they have like this gigantic big fire pit or something that they're throwing this stuff in. And then it's just all going up into the ozone. <laughs> that's, uh. what I, that's what I'm that's what I'm envisioning. See, okay, and like with what are, what is it like the poison oak and poison ivy like you shouldn't burn it because yeah. it'll put the oils in the air like so how do they get rid of this that's one thing that i'm i didn't look into like how they actually like destroy it mm-hmm. but i guess if they put it into like a crematory is that what those things are called like a yeah how they cremate people it just seems like know. a lot yeah. of work for to get rid of an invasive plant species but also if it's causing all this harm to people are you going to talk about anybody that was affected by it? Or do you know those stats? I couldn't find any like specific person. Okay. I'm thinking like yeah. blisters and like, oof, that sucks. Yeah. See, as I was doing my research, I realized that this one isn't necessarily deathly, mm-hmm. but it is very uncomfortable and it gives vampire vibes. So I was like, I think this still counts for yes. sure. And then I think, like, if you ingest it, though, your esophagus isn't being exposed to the light. So I don't know. Mm. Maybe it's it, maybe it's not toxic to ingest. So I don't know. But if you have an like, if you have an allergic reaction to it, or like you get all these blisters and you get infected from it, mm, it could possibly lead to that. Yeah, we can't take it yeah, lightly. Definitely. We can't take this lightly. And actually, in the UK. The Wildlife and Countryside Act of 1981 makes it an offense to plant or cause the giant hogweed to grow in the wild. Oh. And you can actually get up to two years in jail for planting this and, like, distributing it, let's say. Oh, it's a big no-no plant. Yeah, which is very interesting. This is why we have phytosanitary restrictions nowadays. It is. Mm -hmm. Because they were just willy-nilly bringing things everywhere. And look what happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I wonder how they would prove that case. Like, what if you bought a house and it was just growing on your property? Can you be responsible? I don't know. I guess unless they can prove that you were 
gardening it, which would be kind of hard. But I guess they might be able to see, like, how old the plant is yeah. based on how big it is. Like, yeah. No, I think if there was, like, a lot of them, you could probably assume that the plant had been established there for a while because it just drops seeds uh-huh. and will grow. But the previous owner of the home, like, probably should have reported it. Yeah, true. So I guess that gets a little sticky because it's like, I don't know. Yeah. I guess if you report it, they're probably not going to be like, okay, so who owned this house before and didn't report it? Yeah. Maybe they would. Yeah. Maybe if we have any UK people, you can tell us how strict your government is for that kind of stuff. I don't know. I feel yeah. like the US wouldn't do, they wouldn't go that far. They just remove it. That's like, what I was thinking too. It probably, it's probably more strict in the UK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, also i found out about this because i follow or maybe they just come on my for you page a lot but there's a garden in england called the alnwick gardens mm -hmm. and it's in alnwick england and i'm i could be butchering that name too but they have a poison garden oh i've seen that too it looks so cool it looks awesome if i ever go to the uk again like england or anything like i would love to go to this Basically, they have on display a bunch of like toxic and deadly plants. And obviously, well, okay, see, here's the thing is like you on their as of five days ago, or I guess six days ago, they have had 130 people faint, 11 people projectile vomit and two ambulance be called. Okay, maybe garden. don't go there. <laughs> like my thought is, are people <laughs> going in vomit. there and like... <laughs> like huffing i know for the projectile vomit is what's freaking me out i'm are like they are huffing? they eating these toxic plants to see if they can like interesting what's the story i saw a video where they put like a very deadly plant but it's like behind glass like you can't even touch it it's so strange to think like what could cause someone to projectile vomit unless it just like happens like unless some people are super sensitive you know yeah maybe they get nervous like the projectile is like that's that's your body is excessive. rejecting. Yeah. yeah, maybe someone just took a baby there and then they just threw up and they were like, "Oh, we're gonna mark that down as a projectile. We're gonna sue it, <laughs> sue them." <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't know. And like, one hundred and thirty faintings. Like, I just and it's not hot in England. Like, come on. Yeah, I don't understand how. I don't. I don't get it. But anyway, so the U.S also has a system to regulate this plant and it's regulated as a federal noxious weed by the u.s government and it's illegal to import into the u.s or move like through the states without a permit mm -hmm. by the department of agriculture which like i can't think of a reason so we don't have law it doesn't sound like there's like laws against cultivating it hmm. it's just i guess if it's already here I don't know. That just makes it seem like we don't have as strict of rules as the UK. Yeah, because right? if it's causing that much harm to people and it's that invasive, you'd think that you can't bring it with any permit, <laughs> you know? Right. I know. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. But anyway, the, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation has an active program to control the giant hogweed since 2008. So... Mm -hmm. There are programs here. I mean, obviously, it's like on like, you know, the banned plant list. But the only state that I saw that has an active program is New York. Oh, so, OK. Yeah. But it seems to be like kind of running rampant in New England mm. for the most part. So I guess that makes sense. But anyway, the poison garden at the Alnwick Gardens has a giant hogweed. And anytime they have to weed around the plant... They wear like full, basically hazmat suits. See, I my vision was correct. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I wonder if the plant that I'm doing is at this museum. I'm gonna look it up. That'll be fun. Yeah, it was so hard to like pick a plant because there's so many. Mm -hmm. Like, there's this one from Australia that's like known as like the most toxic plant like ever, and I was like, oh, that would have been oh, fun. Australia has all the all the things, all the bad things that could kill you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I tell so you. many. But the last thing that I'll say about this plant is I was looking just like on the wiki page, which, by the way, most of this is from the wiki page and like other I like went down rabbit holes for other information. But the band Genesis, do you guys <gasps> know that band? Yeah. No, really? I don't think so. Well, it's a progressive rock group, apparently. Okay. 
they have a song called The Return of the Giant Hogweed. And <laughs> I don't know if we could like play a clip of it. I don't know what the protocol is with copyright like if it was like nine seconds like on youtube Uh but it is a song basically describing an attack on the human race by the giant hogweed oh my gosh and yeah it's like an eight minute song it's kind of funny so it's like american if anybody wants to look it up genesis the return of the giant hogweed very fun well it was also on some tv show but i forgot the walking is that what you were gonna say yeah yes 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 the walking it was on an dead. episode of The Walking Dead where there were like giant hogweeds like growing out of the zombies, right? Yeah, oh. no, I will say that I gave up on The Walking Dead. So did I. Probably after like season, when when they killed Glenn, spoiler alert, but whatever. <laughs> uh, it seems like it was on season 10 where he encountered walkers, which is zombies with like the giant hogweed growing out of them. And it caused him, caused one of the characters to not be able to see or Ooh. something. Yes, how yes. Weird if is it that? gets in your eye. Like, it I kind of want to watch that episode now, though, to see, like, how they did that. I was like, oh, these zombies have poisonous plants growing out of them. Oh, That's kind of cool. It's giving that Last of cool. Us, isn't it? It's isn't giving it? Last of Us. Yes. Ooh. Wow. So, okay. Yeah, that that is the giant hogweed. Oh, man. It, that's pretty cool. That was a cool story. I hope I never encounter this giant i know but i kind of want to know if people have so if you're listening to this and you have encountered it like oh yeah let us know give us the deets or if you know let someone us know. send us your pics oh yeah if you Oof. work for the yeah. alien union yeah for real we need the we need the inside Seriously. scoop <laughs> we need a mystery bo- oh my gosh i don't want to give away the concept of this book but this plant would be an amazing plant to add into this idea that i have Mm. yeah keep it to yourself off air okay okay (laughs) because it's a book idea that i've had for a long time and i was just reminded of it and now this is giving me so much motivation see yes do it all right guys well thank you so much for listening to this episode i hope that you enjoyed our first addition to our our 2023 halloween series on toxic plants Mm -hmm. toxic slash deadly plants if you enjoyed this again we still have the 2022 series where we talked about plants that solved murders and mysteries and we will be linking probably i'll do like a highlight on instagram or something so that we can have our halloween specials easily accessible and speaking of instagram if you're not following us we are at potted together you can check out our post today where i'll have a bunch of pictures of this very scary plant Mm. and maybe some (laughs) Walking Dead images. Oh, <laughs> yes. You <Ooh>, scary. <laughs> <laughs> you can find us individually on Instagram at De La Plants is me, Becca. Adam is not dude, K-N-O-T. And Nicole is my clean leaves. And we hope you have a very spooky week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch, full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com.